always people coming and going within the team environment, but yeah, there's been um, definitely a lot of people that um, have helped me, myself and my family, um, settle into the into Bristol when I first came. Uh, obviously, I was lucky my brother was here uh, when I first came, and so it was, uh, made the transition a lot easier. And there's a lot of familiar faces uh, from New Zealand, uh, that guys that I played with, the likes of uh, Stephen, Nathan Hughes, and, uh, but at the same time, like, yeah, just uh, really a lot of the boys here that are from the city that really kind of showed me what it meant seeing from them what it meant to them to play for this club and, and to live here I think for me it's just being able to see throughout the five years kind of the pride that's been instilled in the jersey Pat uh, has always been a coach that's uh, given me a chance just thankful to him uh, for everything that he's done for me being able to come to this club and experience just for five years is pretty special and unique and I always look back kind of to this club, to this part of my life, and definitely be a highlight for me. Charles, let's go right back to the start, your first appearance and your first touch, and you probably had to wait a bit longer for it than you'd have hoped, but that, that game, that Premiership Cup game against Gloucester, and that first touch, it felt like there was a lot of frustration built into that. Yeah, um, I remember probably the pre-season game against Connacht, I, I had injured my uh, shoulder and the tackle, and so, uh, just delayed my kind of first game in the Bears jersey and uh, I remember coming off the bench waiting and yeah it was a lot of frustration obviously would have, would have liked to play a bit earlier and uh, but once I got onto the field I, in my head I was just wanting to get get into the game and sometimes no no other better way than to get my hands on the ball and so I think that was a that was a build up of the frustration over the the pre-season but it was nice just to get the hands on the ball and, and that first experience uh, being in the Bears jersey and alongside the boys. So. Your first touch of Peter Town, pump somebody off. What do you remember of your first impressions of Ashton Gate, of Bristol as a city and of the Bears as a club? Oh, it was awesome, like, to come and see the stadium here. I was, I was pretty, um, you know, kind of wild and, um, you know, to, to put, see the atmosphere that um, the crowd brings and, and how much that means to the boys and definitely a highlight and something I always remember. Not like we're going to go quickly, but... It's uh, just exploring the options. Here we go. Here he goes on his debut in the Premiership. Yeah. It's confidence, isn't it? Five metres out. Was that spoken about before the game or was that something that you decided, I'm taking this on my, on my own shoulders? Yeah, watching it back, I, I, I definitely wasn't, I, I think, a plan that we had um, going into the game. But um, I think probably looking at, at Stephen probably on my left, probably gave me the idea that he was ready to run and then when I tapped the ball I was like oh maybe I'm not going to pass this and go myself but I was a bit isolated there so I'm, I'm glad I probably scored that or else I probably would have uh, um, got in trouble. You're a player that seems to have that quality of maybe things aren't going completely well and you have that ability to, to spark a, a big moment that can change the momentum of a game. Are you conscious of that when you're, you're playing, you're thinking we need a spark now, we need something? I think in, in games when you kind of feel momentum, momentum not going your way, that you know as a team we need a we need a, a moment, we need a way to get back into it. But I guess in terms of myself, I, I always try, um, especially before games, just tell myself to do the basics first, and everything else will come off the back of that. Because um, I think if I do it the other way, I know it probably is, is the wrong way going about it. But yeah, for myself, I always try to keep it just simple that. Um, do the basics well and, and everything else, whether that's like flair or a bit of X Factor, um, will come, come naturally off the back of it. It is all Bristol. They're the ones injecting any kind of urgency, and there's space for Piertau, and Piertau charging to within seven metres. <laughs> Derby day at Ashton Gate. You probably would have heard about it, and the boys would have told you about it when you arrived, but. You've played in some really special derbies, some really special atmospheres. That one in particular, that 43-18 victory over Bath, a really, really quick start. That first try for Nathan Hughes straight off the training paddock, what do you remember? Yeah, like, I remember probably the build-up to that game, um, you know, kind of hearing the guys that have been born and bred in Bristol, the likes of Dorsey and Andy sharing to us, you know, what, what it means, you know, these derby games to them, and I guess uh, Bath is a city and their club uh, coming to Bristol. And then coming, I uh, remember that, that, that try there, uh, the, the coaches had set it up during the week. We had run through it, training, and as I was playing out, I think there's probably like two, 
two or three rucks before I was involved and I was just waiting for that, that kind of see what the defence was doing and, and it was just like the coaches wrote up that that gap opened up um, and then I remember uh, Nate just hearing his voice for that offload and um, you know what a try for himself on, on his debut and then just the, the noise uh, from the crowd and when the, that try was scored was just that was like something to take in and um, I was just like you know that that's what I meant to them as well like every try we scored on that day and then eventually with that win uh, just to see the smiles and faces on on the people and in, in, in the stands and them feeling proud um, is one of the best feelings uh, in that jersey. We walk over to the spot from the first try for Luke Moraham. When you receive that ball, two defenders in front of this, probably a two on three at the time. What are you thinking? I think I remember before uh, Zach was probably a bit hurt because he was what he was like limping, and so I think that, that probably triggered that. You know, I was probably going to try and uh, use that to my advantage, and so uh, yeah, I remember calling on that short side for the ball, and then um, really I was just trying to draw in some defenders and then um, put put Moz away and so let Moz do his thing in the, and scoring tries and uh, yeah, luckily it, it panned out as, as it did in my head. It's a real theme from your time here was that partnership with Luke. You guys combined for a lot of tries, you tended to be on the same wavelength. Yeah, oh man, he was, he was a world-class player and you know, having the privilege to, to play alongside someone of, of his calibre and his experience, uh, it definitely felt like you know we did have that connection and um, we could read each other and, and knew each other's uh, strengths and weaknesses and, and just knew you know kind of what we're thinking and what we're trying to achieve and, and uh, yeah, that was awesome. Randall for this one, Pierre Towell sensed an opportunity <laughs> and he somehow got clear, how has he done that? Pierre Towell charging onwards, lovely little thing, the skills are ridiculous, the try is magnificent. Whatever you're doing right now, stand up and applaud Charles Pierre Towell. Counter-attack, Bristol fans will know that when Charles Piotr gets the ball on a counter-attack, the, the stadium really comes to life. So what are you thinking? Does instinct take over? Are you plotting your path? How does it work? Yeah, so in that situation, I wasn't the one catching. And I remember telling Rance to take it and I'll, I'll be running off him. So just I had um, more time to see what kind of defensive pitch is coming up, whether the guys are spread, where, where the gaps are, if they're tight. Um, and to be fair, uh, there was probably a pretty strong wall from, from Northampton Saints. And in my mind, I was kind of just trying to get a good carry back for then our forwards and, and the rest of the team to, to play off that and and then it unfolded of just kind of breaking through and then um, I just remember uh, Rand's chatting to me, he's on my right and I knew at the time I couldn't get the pass away to him so I think the next best thing was just to put that little grubber through and, and what I finished by Rand's as well to get that little fend in and his, uh, his celebration and, and get the crowd going as well. So. How much enjoyment do you get from those counter-attack situations? Because the stadium comes to life, but you seem to be really energised in those positions as well. Yeah, that's definitely one of the parts of the games that I, I love and I enjoy. And and so, um, you know, I know as well when we do catch that ball at the backfield, the, the crowd do like to they cheer and you hear, the, hear them all um, kind of cheering and stuff. So it's definitely an exciting part of the game. And I think for myself, it's always... Um, area of the game that I know that I try and bring uh, into the team as well to, to kind of get, get the team going front football, off counter attack and, and best case scenario line break but um, yeah just build momentum off it. It's not decisively and again Peter <laughs> thought about kicking decided to go for a run thrillingly magnificently wonderfully over halfway and now Thacker. That's a highlight that a lot of Bristol fans will always talk about and always associate with you. Now it was on someone that you played with for a season, <laughs> Benno. What, what are your memories of that? Yeah, like I um, feel bad that it was, it was been like uh, just because of the relationship and, and knowing him and obviously having played together with him. But you know, look, uh, watching it again, it's almost like if I didn't step there, he probably would have cut me in half. So I could kind of sense him really like uh, coming full force, like lining me up and then uh, yeah, kind of probably just instincts of, of growing up as a kid. like. Uh, playing in the backyard, using footwork was always kind of something I enjoyed watching uh, and other players growing up and so always trying to uh, replicate that. Was there anyone as a kid that you looked up to that used that sort of footwork that really inspired you? Uh, not really one person, I, I think. Um, I say like probably back three um, 
players that I looked up to was guys like uh, Joe Rokofoko, uh, Doug Howlett, uh, Rupeni, Dao Dao. You're going to be a rugby player, eh? Hey? <laughs> 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 this guy in the background, eh? <laughs> Charles, let's talk about how family life has changed during your time at Bristol and how important family is to you. Yeah, mate. Uh, obviously, coming just with my wife to start the 2018 and um, five years later, I got, got three kids. And um, yeah, man, it's been a life-changing moment, but probably the, the proudest moment of my life. And um, it's just been, uh, I think, like after games, whether we win or lose, one of the best moments is coming and seeing seeing the kids and seeing the smile like, on their faces. And and I think it's kind of like a, a sense of reality or kind of being grounded again that you know, yeah, I may put on the jersey and and like play rugby, but. Then the day, like you know, I'm just like a, a father to these, to my kids and and a husband to my wife, and so having their support and seeing them in the stands is is definitely um, helped me kind of play the game and enjoy it. Family is definitely one of the kind of uh, pillars of our of our culture and, and the Tongan um, culture, and I think it's just you know being able to have a family and what it means to us uh, and it's definitely for myself it's probably uh, one of my reasons why I play the game and, uh, and enjoy it. So. And what's more tiring, playing rugby or running after these guys? Ah, oh, it's definitely, definitely running after these guys and uh, they, they keep me busy but uh, I guess it's good training for, for on the field. <laughs> you can come down? Yeah? Okay. Try time! <laughs>